Today's society seems to be getting mollycoddled with excuses and victim mentality. It seems to be stunting kids' d development of mental strength. It's easy to fall into the, the, the excuses, oh, I, I didn't work hard enough, oh, and, and, and getting into this almost negative mindset. This negative mindset leads on into avoiding hardship and avoiding loss. To, to coin a phrase, to, to make a headline out of it, I call it the pussification of a generation. It's, it's this almost namby-pamby negative mindset of always looking for the excuse of why not to do something as opposed to taking action. As a two times world champion, dealing with loss and failure is a hazard of the job. It's so it, it means that you have to develop a certain mental skill in being able to deal with the losses. You're making yourself ultimately vulnerable. You're putting yourself in, into, a, into a combat arena in front of all your friends and family, people that are invested in you, people that know how hard you train, how hard you work. You're going off to training, and you, you, you could be training three or four hours a day when I was back home and holding down a full-time job. I went for 15 years of not having a, a holiday from work. I just spent all my annual leave going out to Thailand and living as a full-time Thai boxer training out in Thailand. Over there, this was like six, seven hours a day. It could be three, three, three and a half hours on the morning, three hours on a night. And then as soon as you finish training, you go, you're going off, you're having a quick shower, something to eat, in bed for eight o'clock, and then you're out running again at, at sort of six, seven o'clock the next morning, running around the park in 35 degree heat. Like I say, it's harsh, it's brutal, but it breeds an honesty. It breeds an honesty because there's no hiding behind words. There's no hiding behind the, 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 the bravado or the ego. You're pitting your skills against another man on the opposite side of the ring and you're putting, it, putting the idea out there. One of my first journeys out to Thailand, um, it was a, one of my extended stays. I went out and says that I wanted to live as a full-time Thai boxer, living, in, living out of the gym as, as a full-time fighter. The, the head coach went over and, and he says, right, okay, let's, let's have a look at you, let's have a look at your skills. Um, go on the bag over there and one of the old guys will, will, will assess you. They will, will see what your skills are and what your, um, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are and the things that you have to work on. So I went over and I was, I was on the bag and the old guy was sat on one side reading his newspaper and I was like, I'm going to show this out, I'm going to show this old guy what Thai boxing is all about. So I start hitting the bag and I'm hitting the bag harder and harder and I look, glance over and he's still engrossed in his newspaper. So I was like, I'll make a little bit, no, little bit more noise. And I was hitting it harder and harder and working, was like punching, kicking, kneeing, elbowing. I was like, I'm going to show him how, how it goes. After 15 minutes, I'm sweating bucket loads. I look over at him and he keeps giving the odd little glance up. Okay. He comes over to me after 15 minutes and says, right, okay, stop, stop, stop. You can't punch. You can't kick. You can't kick. You can't knee and you have the footwork of a buffalo. <laughs> I was destroyed. I was, I was heartbroken. And <laughs> he says, it's okay, no problem. You're here with me now. And this is the benefit of coaching. This is the benefit of having experience and people that are going to look after your best interests. And this carries over into entrepreneurship. When you're putting an, an idea and a concept out there, uh, uh, something, that you, something that you believe in, it's a risk. It's something that you believe in as, a, as an individual. However, you put, when you're putting it out to a, a market and getting other people to buy into this idea and this concept and this, this belief, it's a massive risk. In combat sports, the, the, the feedback of making mistakes is immediate. 
I, I, throw, I throw a punch and I don't bring my hands back to my guard. I'm getting punched in the face. I'm getting kicked across the neck. It, it's, it's the, the feedback that you get of making mistakes is immediate. However, in life, there's a time lapse. There's, a, there's this kind of void space of where, it, where there's, there's, no, there's no action. You don't feel the punishment straight away. I'm led on to, uh, there was a, there's a book called, um, by Susan Jeffers. It says, feel the fear and do it anyway. It's that idea of there's, there's, there's nothing that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to do without, without this element of risk. Risk is an inherent part of, of what we're doing. So let's, let's put ourselves out there and then accept the feedback. Most fears that we feel aren't life-ending. In Thai boxing, it potentially was. Um, but this served as motivation. This, this served as our mo my motivation when I was doing five o'clock morning runs, when there was no one else around, the, the streets were bare, people weren't even heading off to work yet, and I was out pounding the streets doing my morning runs before going off to my normal full-time job. This gave me the, the, the motivation to push on one more round and, and push myself just that little bit harder. I started Thai boxing late, so I knew that I had to do that little bit more than, than everybody else if I wanted to really kind of achieve anything. And as I progressed through my fight career, I became more aware of the, the influence that the mind had over results. And should I say, even in everyday, everyday problems, everyday challenges, these things that, are, that come to us. In 2002, I went out to, went out to Thailand and I was, I was lucky enough to, to train out there for, for a long time and I got the opportunity of fighting for my first world title. I came, I came out in the first round and I, I'd heard about this guy and he said that he was, a very, he was very dangerous with his elbows, okay, but they knew that my boxing skills and my kicking skills were better than, than, than the opponents and it was a good fight for me, it was a good challenge. So I came out in the, in the first round and I was having a lot of success. I was boxing in him, I was kicking him, and I, I came back to the corner after the first round. I was like, this is the, this is the route, this is the one, this is, it. This, is my, this is my one shot, this is my one opportunity. And I came out in the second round and I was ha having the same success. I was boxing, I was kicking, I was kneeing. I threw a kick there, I left it just a little bit too long. He grabbed my leg, he took a step back, lifted his elbow and sliced me up the forehead. Gush, uh, blood gushed out of my forehead about about a foot. It was a bad cut. I knew it was a bad cut, so I was just there dabbing away and trying to, trying to work, trying to maintain my composure, trying to show that I wasn't hurt, show that I wasn't show that I wasn't injured. The referee stopped the fight. It took me over to the to the doctors, and he stopped the fight. The, the cut was too bad. I was heartbroken. I thought that was my one shot. That was my one opportunity. Previously, I've been listening to listen, listening to Eminem. You only get one shot. You only get one opportunity. You know the song. But the thing, the thing is, is that, that that's what I'd got into my head. This is what the idea that I'd got into my mind. And I was like, that was it. So I goes back to the gym. It was, it was only a couple of days before I was flying off back home again, going back to my normal job, working at the railway, being an engineer. I thought that was my one opportunity and it kind of slipped away because of my mistakes. Later in the, the September of 2005, one of my friends who was training out in Thailand, he phoned me up and my coach in, in Thailand had got me another opportunity to fight for the 67 kilo world title. I was like, wow, this is another shot, this is another opportunity, this doesn't happen. Let's graft on. I got, when, I got the when I got the phone call, I was <laughs> training, as you might have guessed. I was walking to a, a, a gym in, in Manchester. I was going from Piccadilly, Piccadilly Station to um, my, the, the Thai boxing gym at the back of Piccadilly Gardens. As I was getting the phone call, 
I saw a Luke said advert, and it was Kelly Holmes. The slogans on the on the on the billboard it says, "People said I was too old, people said I was too slow, people said I wouldn't make it." And I was getting, I, was, I saw this as I was on the phone to my friend. At the bottom of the billboard, it says, "Fortunately, I never was a good listener." That sent. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it now. It, 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 it was something so pivotal and so enlightening. People find it easy to, to, to listen to, to negative opinion. Most of the time people are doing it for, for your own well-being because of their own insecurities, as Alex was just saying. So we, we get into this kind of mindset uh, of worrying about the consequences. But as I said earlier, Feel the fear and do it anyway. I came out in it. I went went over to Thailand in, in the October and I fought a, a giant of a man who, who was about a foot taller than me. Um, and it, the, all the betting went against me during it as I was coming out to the fight. Because as I was stood in the in the middle of the middle of the ring facing him for the first time, he was up here. And I, I was like, it was a, it was a risky situation. All the, all the betting crowd that were around the side of the ring, had, all the betting had already gone to the big guy, thinking that I was, thinking that I was going to lose. But I took my opportunity. I took my chance. I won the fight you know, on, on points, and I was absolutely ecstatic. As they were putting the belt around my waist, my, my friends had been watching it on satellite TV, and I was there, I was there by myself. I closed my eyes as he was putting the belt around my waist because I wanted to immerse myself in that feeling and that sensation of the, the, the belt put, being put around my waist. I was like shaking my arms. I was like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Later that moment, uh, later that night, I got, I got a text message from my friend. He said, I saw you mouthing the words that I can't believe it. You've just done it, pal. Well done. I kept that, kept that message on my phone for about six years. Every time I was feeling, Lord, look, look at that text. And it, like I say, it keeps giving, giving me goosebumps every single time. This is, the, this is where I started my NLP journey. NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Neuro to do with the, bra to do with the mind, to, to do with the brain. Linguistics, the language that we use. And programming is the systems and strategies that we use to, to achieve every everyday tasks. This is how I had almost inadvertently adopted this kind of winning mindset, a winning mentality. NLP had now given me a structure of how to pass this mindset on to other people. Being able to put the, the, the protocols and the, and the, and the structure and, and the systems in place to be able to pass these on to other people. This is when I set up Star Performance Mind Coaching, being able to help people and achieve these, these, these tasks. So going back to one of our earlier points, in NLP, it's phrased as, there is no failure, there's only feedback. That feedback that I got in, in, my, in my Thai boxing fights, when I was a little bit lazy with my jab and I got hit back, that was my immediate feedback. It wasn't a failure. It didn't stop the fight. The fight still rolled on. This is how we have to adapt into our adapt this idea and this concept into everyday life. If greatness came easy, everyone would be a champion. The thing is, it's the it's the grind, it's the it's the hard work, it's the tenacity, it's the sheer stubbornness of sticking with an idea along with a coach that are going to help you achieve the goals that you want to achieve. On the first talk, they talked about the, the, uh, the, the globalized perspective. And I found that, found that interesting because it was a nice little segue with um, the, this next part. As, we were set, as I started out with this pacification of a generation. The, the, the idea of, of, of 
accepting these, these truths that we tell ourselves. They're only merely lies. If we trust in, these, in, the, in the systems that, that we use, we go for a, a we understand how the, the social perspective changes. In the West, the majority of people are brought up with a Christian monotheistic perspective, monotheistic ideology. Whereas in the, over in the Far East, there's more kind of Hinduism and Buddhism and, and, and that's how the, the, the social economic is, is grown. That's how people are, are almost kind of brought up. The thing for me was, was, I, was, I grew up in the UK, but spending so much time over in Thailand, it, it, it's hard not to adopt a lot of these ideologies. But it's something that I noticed, that externally, I'm not saying any religion is right or wrong, but exter in, in the West, what we're saying is that with this monotheistic perspective of this guy floating on a cloud that dictates our moral being and uh, our, our path and our journey, we're putting the power outside of ourselves. With a lot of Eastern mentalities, with, with, with Buddhism and Hinduism and stuff like that, we say that the power is within ourselves. In the West, there's more materialism and money chasing. But my understanding of how my life has, has progressed has led me more into understanding what richness really means. Richness is family, freedom, and helping people. As I said previously, the grind, it's the grind that separates the wheat from the chaff. It's the grind that dictates how much you want that goal. Are you willing to step up and say, this is my next step. This is my next challenge. I'm going to dig in and I'm going to work hard to achieve my goal. This is my story. Thank you very much.